If you are an MMA fan or martial arts fan, UFC fan, whatever, you are just as juiced as I am about this weekend because this is the first UFC card taking place in months. I mean, we've all been on lockdown on quarantine and the sporting world has come to a screeching halt. But the UFC has found a way to put on UFC 249 this weekend in Florida. And without further ado, I'm gonna get into this card, break it down a little bit, offer my predictions for the fight, and we'll see how they stack up with how things play out. And I'm just gonna stick to the main card because this card is absolutely stacked from top to bottom. And for me to get into every single detail of every fight, it wouldn't be as brief as I want this video to be. So if you want an in-depth analysis, a little more in-depth analysis, in my last podcast with my good buddy Steve Jabril here, we break down the UFC 249 card in a little bit more detail than I do in this video. So if you go check that out, you'll see us talk about that a bit more. First fight on the main card, you have Greg Hardy, the former NFL lineman, facing off against his greatest test in MMA yet, Jorgen DeCastro, heavyweight knockout artist, who has just gotten his first win in the UFC recently. A Dana White Contender Series alum coming up to face Greg Hardy and Greg Hardy is coming off a couple of controversial fights and he needs to make a statement in order to solidify himself as a viable up and comer for the UFC's heavyweight division. Next up after that we have Jeremy Stevens versus Calvin Cater and an interesting fight that would have been for huge implications in the featherweight division. But just this morning Jeremy Stevens ended up missing weight and he weighed in at 150 pounds and as of right now it would appear that the UFC is in negotiations to continue to try to get that fight going despite Jeremy Stevens missing weight. In the third fight on the main card, we have an absolute heavyweight banger coming up. This fight can go one of many ways, but the potential for it is absolutely massive and you will see why once you take a look at Francis Ngannou and Hyrginio Rosenstrike who are two of the biggest and baddest heavyweights in the UFC's 265 pound limit division. I mean, Rosenstrike is a big, heavy dude, very uh, overpowering. He has kickboxing experience, but he doesn't necessarily look like built out of marble that Francis Ngannou does. And Francis Ngannou has a much more impressive UFC resume as of late. So this is an interesting battle. This is a very interesting fight with two heavyweight titans clashing. I have no idea who's gonna win this fight, and I'm not even gonna try to predict it. But what I am gonna try to predict is our co-main event and main event of the evening. In our co-main event of the evening, Dominic Cruz makes his bantamweight return after a couple of years outside of the octagon, where he faces off against current bantamweight champion Henry Cejudo, who is also the UFC flyweight champion and is also as he'll have you know, an Olympic gold medalist. With Dominic Cruz coming off a massive layoff against one of the greatest lighter weight fighters in the UFC, in the world today, in Henry Cejudo. If I had to give a prediction of this fight right off the top of my head right now, and I've been going back and forth on this a lot recently, I'm gonna have to say, I think Henry Cejudo gets this done by decision. I think this is gonna be a very tactical fight, I think both guys are going to utilize their wrestling and their overall mixed martial arts savvy to be able to solve each other's problems. I think it's going to be a close one. Of course, like all of my predictions, this one could be completely blown out of the water and we could get a knockout or an upset by Dominic Cruz. And I'm still not 100%, but if I had to bet on it, I'd go with Henry Cejudo by decision. For the main event of the evening, Tony Ferguson finally gets a fight after months and months of waiting. Tony Ferguson is coming off an amazing winning streak, taking out some of the lightweight division's best on his way to a title shot. Unfortunately, that title shot did not materialize because of unforeseen events that transpired this year, but he is in a position to solidify his number one contender status even further by knocking off Justin Gaethje, who as of late has had a murderous winning streak of his own knocking out the likes of Cowboy Cerrone, Edson Barbosa, and James Vick. These are two of the lightweight division's most violent fighters, and these two guys know how to utilize their game in order to inflict more damage on the other fighter. 
Justin Gaethje isn't known for taking fights to the ground, but Tony Ferguson definitely is a skilled ground artist, and if the ground game does come into play, it will be super interesting to see how he can implement his game. That being said, if Justin Gaethje can land one of those powerful shots on Tony Ferguson, it could be lights out, as it was for Edson Barbosa, who had never been knocked out before in the UFC prior to his fight with Justin Gaethje just months ago. So in this fight, my prediction, after all that being said, it's a tough one to pick, but I think Tony Ferguson's gonna find a way, impose his game over Justin Gaethje's, and find a TKO in round three. I think it's gonna be a high pace, and it's gonna be hard to keep track, but both of these guys have had damage inflicted upon them before, and who knows who's gonna get caught first when it comes to those precision shots, especially later in the fight when the defense isn't as strong as the first two rounds. With all that being said and my predictions on the line, I absolutely can't wait to watch this card. And no matter what happens, I'm, I'm so happy for the world of mixed martial arts and combat sports to continue despite this pandemic we're all going through. All that said, I hope you all enjoy the fights. I'll definitely be posting my reaction video. Hope everyone has a safe and healthy weekend. And hopefully we get a lot more fights and sporting events coming in the near future.